Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises, all honor, and all glory go to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. And today, I decided to do a quick video over being still. What, what do I mean when I say be still? Or what does the Bible mean when it says be still in Psalms chapter 46? Let's read it. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 10 says, I misplaced my pen. So like it. Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Mm. Be still and know that I am God. The rest of the verse reads, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So be still is a code word for something. It's a code word for be patient. It says, be still and know that I am God. Be patient and know that I'm the most high God. I can do whatever I want to do, however I want to do it, whenever I want to do it. He said, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So in due time, you know, be patient. And in due time, look, this, this place is not going to be wicked no more. It's going to be righteous because my name is going to be exalted among the heathen and exalted among the whole earth. That's what that verse is saying. So the reason why I was compelled or drawn to do a video over being still or being patient is I was actually just looking it up. I don't know. I just, it was the spirit. I was looking it up. And when I really, really just looked at the definition, I really just pondered on it. I was like, man, people need the, people need this. I needed it. You know, it was good. So um, I actually wrote down the definition on my little notebook that one of the brothers gave me. It's a nice little pad. You can put anything in this thing, you know? So patience, the definition straight off of Google, it says the capacity to accept, mm, the capacity to accept or tolerate delay. Everybody understands that. Being patient is being able to deal with something, not not moving how you want it to do, how, how you want it to. You know, something moving slow, you have to be patient. When you're trying to go at this speed, it says you got to be patient, though. I got to read this again. It says the capacity to accept or tolerate delay. This is the part what got me to tolerate delay, trouble or suffering without getting upset. This is straight off of Google. When I think about patience, I always think about. OK, you know, um. I say I'm driving on the highway and it's a car in front of me going slow. It's going slow and I'm getting impatient. I'm all right. Well, let me calm down. Let me be patient. That's what I think about. That's what I think about, you know, on a smaller level, just things not going as quick as I want it. Like I understand it. But when I read the definition and it kind of elaborated on it a little more and then I start thinking about precepts I already knew and I'm like, ah, that make that make more sense. But look, I got to read the definition again. It says the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble or suffering without getting angry, upset. So to be patient is to be able to accept a delay, to accept troubles, to accept suffering without getting angry or upset. That's what that's straight off of Google, you know. Not the Bible dictionary or anything. That's straight off of Google. And it was it was amazing to me. And I'm like, man, be still. Calm down. What are you in the rush for? What am I in the rush for? Right? And it's a few precepts that pops in my head when I think about being patient. I want to go to Romans. Romans chapter 5. Man, I got a few of them. Romans chapter five, and we'll start at like verse, verse three, Romans chapter five and verse three says, and not only so, but we glory in trip and tribulations also. So he says, not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We know what tribulation is. It's um, going through affliction, going through trials, you know, you got ups and you got downs. You know, I just did a video over these kind of um, um, a quick video just talking about um, um, trials and tribulations and the ups and downs, the bittersweet 
and um, it's a really it's a beautiful struggle but tribulations we gotta read it man watch what it says and not only so but we glory in tribulations also if you don't know what glory means glory means to take I, I was just looking it up so it's kind of fresh on my mind like everybody can kind of understand it but um, straight off of Google it said it said um, to take pride in or pleasure in it also said that was the verb to take pride in or take pleasure in that was fire to me because I'm like man when I read the scripture I'm like let me let me go look up this word man I know what glory is I know what it means but let me go just read it let me just see what Google just stated so it says to take pride in or gloria and you're supposed to take pride and pleasure and glory and tribulations and being afflicted and and going up and then going going down you know the the the, the bitter part the part that you don't like the part that strengthens you and actually build character glory in that take pleasure in it take pride in it you know well, yeah i went through that you know but now i'm over that and that's something for you to take pleasure in because you conquered it you got that victory and you won that battle it says knowing that tribulation worketh patience it says knowing that tribulation worketh patience how does being afflicted works or strengthens your patience because whenever you get I gotta grab this precept. All right, I'm gonna let the precept do the talking. Syrac. Syrac chapter two, verse four. This is one of my favorite, favorite. Syrac, the book is my favorite book, but Syrac chapter two is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. So Syrac chapter two and verse four says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art brought to a low estate. So he said, whatever comes your way, take it with joy take it cheerfully whenever you start having to battle certain things in your life or certain people or spirits or demons take it cheerfully and when the most high god bring you down here or gives you something bitter to drink or bring you to a low estate he said be patient man because we know that the ups and downs don't last forever you know it's not always going to be bitter all all the time you know so take it cheerfully because you know that that tribulation it builds your patience it shows you how to be patient it teaches you hey man look it is what it is i'm gonna take it on the chin i know that we're gonna get through this it builds your patience you know let's go back to um, romans 5 romans 5 and 4 it says <clears throat> and patience experience and experience hope so you being patient and understanding the highs and lows um the different kind of battles you win some you lose some that that builds experience that builds experience how does it build experience because you already you you've been through it man i wish i could use my phone to look up the word experience but in the book of syrac i want to say that i want to say like the 32nd chapter man i want to see if i can find that i don't got my um, my sword that i usually usually have let's see real quick if I can't find it real quick, then I'll just elaborate on it. Let's see. I want to say 32 and like 20. Mm. Man. Man, I'm hurt because I should have this one memorized. Okay, so back to Romans, though. I can elaborate on it. So and patience experience so patience we already uh, got the definition is you being able to accept a delay or long stuff or um let me read it it says the capacity to accept or tolerate delay trouble or suffering without getting angry upset so when it goes high, it boom, 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 it's all good. When you go down there, you got to learn how to take that on the chin. And you going up here and fighting all these different battles and going through the bitter and the sweet, it does something. It gives you something. It gives you experience. 
because you've been up here on high before right you've been right here in the middle before that's experience you know how it feels and you've been right here before on the bottom when it feel like you can't do nothing that's experience and your experience and going through them different tribulations tribulations and trials and affliction it tells you that it gives you hope it gives you hope and we know that hope is the evidence let's just grab it because we already hear in Romans Romans chapter 8 and 24 Romans chapter 8 and 24 says for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen so if you can see it let's see what it says for hope that is seen is not hope so if you can see the things it's not really hope let's keep reading he says for what a man seeth for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it and i'm elaborate on it so paul is just saying look when you have hope in something you're hoping in something that you have not seen because if you can see it why are you putting hope in it it's already there you don't have to hope that um that you can um, say um you walk in quick trip you buy you some chips you go to your car and you're like man i hope I hope I can eat these chips. It don't make sense. You can see it and you already finna eat them. But say someone else is at the store and you're like, man, I hope they remember to get the chips because you can't see it. You don't know if it's gonna happen, right? And that's why it says we're saved by hope, right? Because we hope that the Most High God sent His only begotten Son the second time and redeem us. Hopefully we found worthy because we don't know. We haven't seen it come to pass. It says, but if we hope for that, we see not. So if we're actually hoping in the things that we cannot see, it says, then do we with patience wait for it? Then we're going to patiently, hey, we're going to endure. Hey, it tells you, I got to read this, this one more time. It says, then we do patiently wait for it. The capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. So I'm actually challenging um, all the Akiyam and Akwafs to, to strengthen their patience. Have patience with learning patience. Mmm. Mmm. I'm going to say that again in a second. And hopefully it hit y'all's spirit. So the challenge is patience. The challenge is being still and letting the Most High God work. That's the challenge. Make sure you're trying to be patient with your rib, you know. Make sure you're being patient with your husband. Make sure you're being patient with your kids. Make sure you're being patient with um, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. Be patient with, with accumulating all these things. And be patient with learning patience. Mm, I like that. It tells you in the book of Syrac, um... And there's still more on this Romans 5. Okay. I gotta read, I gotta read Romans 5 all the way through, and then I'll grab another precept or two and I'll close it out. So Romans chapter 5 and verse verse 4 again. And patience, it worketh experience. Your patience, it gives you experience. And experience, it teaches you hope. It says, and hope maketh not ashamed. Hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. It tells you that hope makes you not ashamed. It's no way that um I could be ashamed of the gospel, man, because I have that much faith and hope in this thing. That's why no matter where I'm at or what I'm doing, I'm always I'm always wearing my friends because I hope I, I'm hoping for the things that's not seen. No matter where I'm at or what I'm doing, I usually got like a sword or two on me. You know, I always got my Bible. I'm, I hope and I got my hope. I, I don't have a plan B. If you're in the truth and you got a plan B, just in case um, the Lord don't come back or just in case this, you don't think that this is the truth, that's shaky. That's scary. And you shouldn't be in it like that. You should put all your marbles in the bag on this one, you know? Cause you're supposed to hope in this thing, man. And you can't be ashamed of this. You can't be. 
It says, and hope maketh not a shame. And when you really, really, really wholeheartedly put all your hope, all your faith, all your might, and you glorify in the Lord in those things, at the end of the day, when you, when you, when you have a shot, do come back, Lord willing, you found worthy to be saved first and foremost. And he doesn't put you to shame because it tells you in the book, um, um, Luke chapter 21 and 36, that you're supposed to pray and um, pray the prayer that you're found worthy when Yahweh Shah makes the second coming. In the book of Second Ezra's, um, Salakia, I just lost my train of thought. It was somewhere I was going. It was going to be good, though. Lord willing, um, the most I got, put it back in my spirit to remember that. So I'm going to go to Syrac. Syrac one more time. And I want to say it's like chapter 21. Con. Syrac chapter 21 and 32. Syrac chapter 21 and 32 says, Necessary patience and seeking the Lord is better than he that leadeth his life without a God. So when you come into this truth, it's necessary to have patience. It's very, 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 very necessary to have patience. It says it's, it's very, I got to read again, necessary patience and seeking the Lord. When you're seeking the Lord, you got to, got to, got to have patience. That's why in Sarek chapter 2, it says, my son, when thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly adore and make not haste in the time of trouble. And it says, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last stand. For whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to the Lord's state. If you can understand, you'll see why it's so important or necessary to have patience. Because a lot of men, sorry, chapter 2 and 14, that's why it's one of my favorite chapters. It's just, it'll get me in the spirit. Sorry, chapter 2 and 14 says, Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? So it tells you necessary patience is needed when you come to seek the Lord. Because a lot of men, they lose patience. And they stop studying. They stop believing. They stop hoping. You know, they stop keeping the commandments. They stop believing. And they get lukewarm. And they fall out of the truth. And next thing you know, it was like a phase that they went through. The Bible was just a phase. But don't let that be you. Sis, don't let that be you. You got to have patience when you're seeking the Lord. Because if the Most High God show up in you and you didn't have patience and you lost patience and you stopped doing all of the things you were supposed to do. Let's read it again. Woe unto you. Meaning you're going to be destroyed. It's going to be um, you grinding your teeth, gnashing the teeth. And you're going to have a puddle full of tears, man, because you're not going to make it, you know. So be still, man. Let me. Um, hey, that's why everybody say patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. And we know that a virtue, that's why it tells you um, in the book of Proverbs, um, who can find a virtuous woman? Virtue or virtuous is basically having high morals or high standards for yourself. You get me? And we know that morals, so I'm kind of breaking it down right now. Morals is you kind of, um, morals is what you get um, based off how you was raised or the things that you, that one start believing whenever, um, Basically, what your conscience tell you is right or wrong, you know, if that makes sense. You might have to rewind because my words wasn't super, super fluent. So patience is a virtue. It's important, you know. Um, I think I got one more precept. First Corinthians. Oh, wait, that don't sound right. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. It's a classic. Captain DeBar faithfully pulls out this precept so romans chapter 15 and verse 4 says for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience 
and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's Romans chapter 15 and 4. So like, let me move that. It says, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So you have to have patience when it comes to this truth and you learn in the secrets and the mysteries and hey, even your identity, you gotta have patience. Hey Amen. if you got that patience, these scriptures are gonna comfort you. And then when you're getting comfort and you ravished with the Bible and her love and you actually getting uh, getting the wisdom of this book, man, it brings on hope. You can actually start believing in it. You know, you can actually start hoping in the things that you haven't seen yet. Right. So this video, I wasn't trying to go this long. I was trying to only do, you know, two, two or three precepts. Um, so Salakia, I was trying to start making the quick videos, but... The spirit had other plans. Sirach chapter 43 and 30 says, When you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can, for even yet will you far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for you can never go far enough. And with that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. Like General Hezekiah always say, never forget. Death to America. Shalom. Wabarak. Mashpaka. Shalom.